This is an Artist Journey podcast, the podcast for people thriving and creating as artists. I'm your host, Malcolm Dewey, and let's begin. Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of an Artist Journey podcast. Great to be chatting to you again about art and the art world in general. And I thought um, there's a topic that has been uh, on the back of my mind for a few weeks. And basically it comes out of um, an experience of a relative of uh, our family who had uh, some creative work out on exhibition, group exhibition and uh, it was a fantastic piece of work, um, and there was a lot of uh, people uh, talking it up well before the event, um, and really an exceptional piece of work. However, when the event opened and the judging had all been concluded, it turns out no acknowledgement was given to this item, no ribbons, no best of shows, no highly commended, nothing. You know, as family members, we heard about this and we were quite shocked and wondered what was going on. Fortunately, my relation did not uh, take it too seriously and just sort of shrugged it off. But I know it would have hurt and she you know, was quite um, hopeful and optimistic and frankly, it seemed to come across as quite a snub. And for the rest of us, we were a little irritated by it, actually. And then a few days after that, I came across a quote, something I'd seen in the past before, but um, came up with it uh, again and saw it, and it really resonated. And it's from the Bhagavad Gita, which is a pretty ancient kind of um, Sanskrit song really from the Indian uh, history written somewhere between 5 to 8 BC. One of the references that I saw quoted from it was that um, in essence um, you are not uh, entitled to the fruits of your labors but rather the process of the labor itself. In other words you can enjoy and benefit from the process of creating but Once the art is done and has been released to the world, um, what happens thereafter is out of your hands. You're not entitled to expect anything more. I think that that really resonated in this instance as well. I know creating this piece of art was a real achievement and years of work. But um, to attach all of that to a result... That was not in your control. That, to me, I think is wrong. So that inspired me to write something about this on my blog and also this podcast episode. And I call it How Artists Can Find True Peace of Mind in Their Work Through the Process of Creating. And uh, I start off the article with the question of how do you respond to setbacks or frustration with your work? I believe that for artists and and all creative people, this question is especially important. You know, we we tend to work alone. We rely on our own self-discipline. We have to keep creating work, even if works that you have already completed on perhaps not selling or maybe not up to your expectations, you still have to carry on and produce the work. You've got to show up, and nobody is checking on you. You've got to make sure you do it yourself. I came up with sort of three personalities of artists, and maybe they're more, but these sort of come to mind straight away, and I, I describe it as artist number one. This artist submits her work to a juried exhibition, but unfortunately her work is not accepted, And she first reacts with anger before slumping into a depression. And then artist number two, he has his work on an exhibition. He's built up his expectations for recognition from the judges. And everyone has said 
His work is awesome. But he discovers he does not receive any commendations or work or rewards or certificates, nothing. And he is furious and calls the system rigged against him or artists like him. Then there's the third kind of artist, and this artist does not show her work at all because she decides this is the safest way. If nobody can see her work, then nobody can judge her, and she avoids disappointment. And, after all, safety is the best policy. Do any of these sound familiar to you? Have you perhaps experienced this yourself, or some of these, uh, let's call it symptoms? (laughs) Or maybe you know someone else. So, let's have a look at how we can avoid these really quite toxic situations because they can grow and become something that keeps you down and eventually other people are going to start associating you with these negative responses and that's not going to do your image any good either. So we have two extremes. Every artist is trying to produce their best work and to reach new levels of skill. If this is done in a reasonable way then no problem. But trouble surfaces when artists attach their well-being to an outcome. This can manifest itself as a desire for a reward or recognition of some sort. So these artists will put their work into the world for validation from someone or some other entity. On the other extreme, we have artists who are too fearful to show their work. These artists are not trying to get recognition or reward. They are doing everything they can to avoid anyone judging their work. And whether this is done rationally or not is not the point. And some of these fearful artists may secretly desire recognition, but they do not have the confidence to follow through. They will always find an excuse to avoid going public with their work. And if you tell them their work is really very good, they'll just laugh this off as hollow praise. We've got to decide, is work and reward the same thing? So the quote I referred to in the Bhagavad Gita simply, I think, clears that up very succinctly. And as I said, it means, for artists, it is the process of creating art from which you must take your joy and not the rewards. It reminded me of an old song from the late 70s and 80s by Supertramp, called The Logical Song. It was really a big, big track back in my youth. (laughs) And uh, I remember it well. And the song is really about what is really worthwhile. And it is our creative freedom that is important, not official recognition. Listen to the song, look it up on the internet, The Logical Song by Supertramp, if you're not aware of it. It's uh, quite a profound piece of work. So I've come across many artists trying to achieve external recognition. Some of them, or most of them, just take it in their stride and go about it like anyone else would be expected to. I think they all understand that the odds for success through jury shows and competitions and things like that, you know, is, is not that great if you take for instance a hundred people who enter a competition and maybe there are three top prizes so does this mean that 97 people aren't good enough of course this would be ridiculous to suggest this if only three people get official recognition and all the entrants are excellent artists it doesn't change the fact that all of them are excellent artists. The fact is there were just three prizes and three people had to win them. That's all it is. So the ideal response is to simply move on and not to internalize the disappointment. But some artists will not see it this way. The problem arises when an artist attaches his or her ego to the outcome. This artist cannot control the outcome and this inevitably is going to expose them to pain. By behaving this way, the artist does not empower herself. She actually disempowers herself. So these artists may turn around and say, hang on, 
I'm doing the right thing by taking part in competitions and jury shows. I'm doing I'm being proactive, taking positive steps to build my portfolio. And the results will strengthen my portfolio and and professional reputation. So on the face of it, this argument does seem logical and why not? There's nothing wrong with taking part in these events. But the problem, as I've said, arises if you attach your emotions to the outcome. So if the outcome is not to the artist's liking, then what reaction is the artist going to have? If it is dismay and anger and depression, and then that's the wrong attitude to take, and it can have serious repercussions. So artists who take a negative result personally are going to suffer from it if they blame themselves and others and lose self-confidence they are harming themselves terribly and for no good reason. Instead of using events like this and public recognition to strengthen your character as a professional, it ends up weakening them. As I've said, the artist is disempowering herself. She's giving control of her self-esteem and well-being to a third party. Judges have their own personal feelings and responses And they're not taking their job personally. They're just doing it to the best of their ability. It's not a personal attack. Artistic and creative freedom in most cases is a state of mind. Getting feedback from a professional or someone you admire can be constructive and helpful. But taking part in an event or seeking feedback is something you have to be prepared to um, take in your stride as not a personal attack on your work. So for artists to remain empowered and in control of their well-being, they have to disconnect themselves from the end result. That attachment to recognition and reward is not the way to work. Now what about the fearful artist? Okay, the artist who is so fearful and is too afraid to publish her work or exhibited. This artist is also too attached to the outcome and is doing herself a disservice. And for that matter, other people who may want to see or benefit from seeing her work. She's using an emotion that's not helping her develop. So she's disempowering herself and undermining herself. She doesn't want to step out of her comfort zone And she's trying to protect herself within that small space. You may ask that or suggest that this situation is very rare these days because of all the social media and everyone's putting their stuff out there anyway. What is a few photos and blog posts going to harm someone? In fact, this kind of uh, fearful artist is probably not really using these channels effectively either is always holding herself back. It's also important to remember that social media can come with a lot of pressure as well. The fearful artist is seeing fantastic art from other people and she obviously then believes that her work is just not good enough and she cannot compete with everyone else's perfect Instagram feed or Facebook feed. So why bother competing at all? So it comes down to controlling what you can. These artists need to distinguish between what they can control and what they cannot control. And only then can they make the correct decision. You have to let go of what you cannot control. This will bring you peace of mind and more focus on the creative process itself. Remember, it is only the creative process and your own reactions that are within your control. Every artist has the power to improve their art and to work hard and to learn new things. When it comes to external events and competition, you can only treat it as a learning experience. How do you respond to it and how can it strengthen you as an individual? If you do win and get the rewards, then... You've got to be grateful and humble. Enjoy the experience, then let it go. If you don't achieve recognition, 
you need to also accept that and move on. Rather take comfort in the knowledge that by persisting to work on your process and persisting to improve your work, over time you will improve in all aspects. Become so good that they cannot ignore you. Or, let's put it this way, become so good that they may ignore you sometimes, but they will not be able to ignore you every time. So that's what persistence will do. Persistence is the secret to success. Like the river that wears down the mountain and creates the Grand Canyon. So how to find long-term happiness as an artist? I firmly believe that the artist who enjoys and loves the process of creating art is going to have a long and happy career. Taking pleasure in the daily process, whether it's creating something or planning your next piece of artwork or even marketing your art to the world, all of this forms part of the creative process. And it's within that that you will find happiness no matter what career stage, it's all about the long-term creative life that has the rewards. Yes, there will be setbacks, but overall, the pluses will outweigh the minuses by a long, long way. Nobody is going to remember that you did not get best in show a few years back. Instead, they're going to look at your entire career and your general body of work and celebrate the fact that you've been an artist creating amazing work for many years. Another important point is to be true to yourself. Remember that as a creative person, you need the peace of mind in which to create effectively and honestly. If you chase after awards, are you going to be true to yourself? For example, are you tempted to copy the latest trend in art as you see it on perhaps on social media are you constantly looking at what is trending in order to get some sort of edge are you going to try and produce knockoff work or something that is not coming from your own creative soul but rather what you think is going to sell if this is the case then you're not being honest to your creative self what happens when the trend comes to an end? In this situation, you're always going to be playing catch-up and never establishing your own true voice or unique art form. It's more important to create good work and raise your own game, not someone else's by copying them. So what is success in the end? Occasionally, you need to take a moment and ask yourself what success looks like for you right now. For some, it may be the amount of certificates and ribbons on their gallery wall. For others, it's the number of sales and the money they make. Sounds a little like another form of the rat race to me. Of course, an artist needs to make a living, and I'm not suggesting that earning an income is wrong. I firmly support artists who go out to earn a respectable income. An artist has control over how they earn an income. So that is part of your process. You can try and improve your work and your marketing, reach new and potential collectors, galleries, and whatever other avenues are legitimately open to you. But when you want recognition in the form of praise or awards, you are opening yourself up to trouble because now you are empowering someone else and you cannot control the outcome. If you don't win, don't regard it as a negative result. It is simply a result. It is what it is. It is neither positive nor negative, and it is not a reflection on you as a person or as an artist. All you can do is create your best, and then let it go. And then you have done everything that can be called upon you. You are able to respond graciously whether you win or not. And this is remaining true to your calling as an artist. Another point in conclusion is to remember that you are energy and how you react determines your level of energy. 
To react with anger or disappointment is to lose your creative energy. You'll feel weaker and your focus will not be on the process of creating art. Finding excuses, anger and recriminations are exhausting and that will simply drain your creative energy. So instead, choose to fill yourself with positive and creative energy and respond in a positive way. Don't work against yourself. Release yourself from these old and negative responses. In this way, you're going to find lasting happiness and creative joy as an artist. If perhaps you or you know someone else who has gone through this or is facing this sort of challenge and is not reacting as well as they should be to so-called setbacks, maybe this will help get a bit of a refocus and a reset. And I hope you found a bit of inspiration from this, and, but most importantly, a bit of peace of mind and a bit of calm. Don't get uptight when things don't go your way. Just step back, let it slide on by, and keep on doing what you meant to do. And I know these are words that I speak to myself as well, because not every day is smooth sailing. And uh, I think every week there's a few challenging days to get through. But uh, it's about how you pull yourself through those days that determines the trajectory of the rest of the week, I think. So um, we'll try and do as best we can. Well, I have enjoyed this short uh, podcast and um, to the point, I hope. And I hope it's been helpful to you as well. If you've enjoyed it, um, please share it and uh, subscribe if you want to be notified of the next uh, podcast episode. Until we chat again, enjoy your art and uh, cheers for now.